The first item of business is portfolio questions. In order to get in as many members as possible, I'd be grateful for short and succinct questions and responses. The portfolio that we move to is education and skills. And at question number one, I call Katie Clark. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has with COSLA and Unison following the balloting of thousands of the trade union's members working in schools and nurseries over pay. Cabinet Secretary Shirley Ann Somerville. The Local Government pay negotiations are a matter for COSLA on behalf of the 32 councils and the trade unions to resolve via the Scottish Joint Committee. Any intervention from the Scottish Government at this point would undermine that process. I would encourage the Local Government trade unions and COSLA to continue open, constructive dialogue to find the resolution which, of course, avoids any potential industrial action. Katie Clark. Does the Minister believe that handing the education staff who kept schools running during the pandemic an effective pay cut is helping to build a Scotland that is wealthier and fairer, more resilient and better, in the words of the First Minister? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, uh, the Scottish Government uh, does recognise the strength of feeling right across the public sector, including many within the local government workforce, and recognise uh, their desire uh, to see their efforts uh, to be recognised by way of a pay rise. Uh, we are, um, of course, as I said in my original um, uh, answer, not party uh, to the national local government pay negotiations. We have not participated in these in the past. And I, as I said, this, uh, an intervention at this point would undermine that process. Uh, but I think it is, of course, very important uh, that the Scottish Government continues to meet with Clausula or with the unions to discuss matters of mutual interest, including local government funding, for example. And of course, the Scottish Government will continue uh, those discussions that we have with Clausula and with unions. Willie Rennie. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the admission by COSLA that private and voluntary nurseries providing the 1140 hours receive a significantly lower than council nurseries. This means that staff in one part of the sector are receiving thousands of pounds less each year for doing exactly the same job. It's discrimination by design. How has this been allowed to happen and when will it be fixed? Can I just check that the Cabinet Secretary heard enough, or would you prefer that Mr Rennie repeated his question? Um, I think between Ms Hockey and I, we were trying to piece together um, what Mr Rennie says, so my apologies if I have not um, actually got this uh, question. I am sure Mr Rennie will follow it up um, in writing. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, Scottish Government uh, works with COSLA to ensure uh, that we have uh, a package that is fully funded uh, for the 1140 hours. Uh, there is an expectation, of course, within uh, the Scottish Government that we make very clear to COSLA, um, and they recognise that, about the importance um, of our private providers uh, within that. If there are particular details um, around that that I have not managed to, to uh, pick up, because apologies, the connection was quite bad, President Officer, I would be happy to follow that up with, with, with Mr Rennie in due course. Thank you. Question number two, Cocab Stewart. Thank you. I would like to ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the implementation of the Baby Box programme. Minister Claire Hawhey. The latest data, data available on take-up in 2020 shows that 98 per cent of expectant parents took up the opportunity to receive a baby box. As of Friday 10 June 2022, we have distributed 220,788 700, 220, baby boxes to families across Scotland. The independent evaluation of Scotland's baby box, published in August 2021, highlights the positive impact of the scheme on families, particularly for first-time younger and low-income parents. The evaluation showed 97 per cent satisfaction with the baby box and contents, and 91 per cent of families reporting financial savings as a result of receiving the baby box. Um, I thank the Minister for that answer. Uh, will she join me in welcoming Ireland's uh, pilot project dubbed Little Baby Bundle, uh, which will see 500 newborn babies receiving a baby box, a policy initiative similar to Scotland's? And does she agree with me that universality is an essential aspect of Scotland's scheme, which promotes an equal start for all children in Scotland, reducing stigma and conveying benefits beyond the purely financial? 
Minister. Yes, I, I do agree with the member co It is fantastic to see that Scotland, uh, that Ireland, have decided to pilot their own version of the baby box, which has been informed by our approach in Scotland. And I wish the project every success. Scotland's baby box strongly signals our determination that every child, regardless of their circumstances, should get the best start in life by ensuring that every family with a newborn has access to essential items and support needed in the first six months of a child's life. I believe the universality is a crucial aspect of the success of the scheme in Scotland. And as I said previously, there is a 98 per cent take-up of the scheme. And this helps to underpin our ambition that every child should have the best start in life. Question number three, Mark Ruskell. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on its work to provide access to neurodevelopmental support for all children in schools. Cabinet Secretary. We want all children and young people, including those with neurodiverse conditions, to get the support needed to reach their full potential. In November 2021, we published our updated ASL Action Plan and Progress Report to deliver the Morgan Review recommendations, and we will publish a further update in the autumn. Last year, we also published our Progress Report on the Autism in Schools Action Plan. While the majority of actions are complete, we would acknowledge there is more to do to improve the support offered to neurodiverse learners, and we continue to engage with partners to take this forward. Mark Ruskell. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. As she will, of course, recall our joint visit to Tuke Primary School in Dunfermline, which is trialling an exciting neurodevelopmental pilot project. It has clearly been transformative for the whole school community, especially for those children who have really struggled to find the right school environment to learn in in the past. Getting it right for every child means that all children in all schools deserve access to this type of support. I know the Cabinet Secretary knows that. So, Beyond pilots and evaluations, can the Cabinet Secretary outline what the long-term plan is to cement that kind of best practice into every school in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I thank uh, Mark Ruskell for that question? Indeed, it was a pleasure uh, to, to join him and Kevin Stewart on a visit to my constituency to Tuch Primary School. Uh, and it was a fantastic uh, visit to be able to see uh, the, the, really, uh, the real difference that, that can be made uh, with a project that is in place. Yes, it's a pilot project, but real lessons being learned about how uh, the, the school uh, can work with families as well as the young person. Uh, I'm very determined, Kevin Stewart's very determined to see what we can learn from those pilot projects uh, to ensure that what we saw in Tuch uh, can be built upon and adapted upon. And we can also learn from the other pilot projects um, that are available. He strikes a very important note that the type of support that we saw uh, in Dunfermline uh, should um, be applicable uh, within all schools. Uh, it may not be the same in all schools, uh, but there's certainly a responsibility for us to make sure that the children uh, we met uh, within Tuch um, actually have uh, that same type of support right across the country. And I'll be very happy to continue to work with Mr Ruskell on this issue um, in the future. Fiona Hislop. Having recently visited the Donaldson Trust, the leading charity for neurodiversity in Scotland based in my constituency, which I encourage the Cabinet Secretary to visit, I am aware of the complexity of neurodiversity, but also the importance of early identification and acknowledging the Scottish Government's intentions and actions in its Autism in Schools Action Plan. What assurances can be given to my constituents regarding timescales for early identification of individual needs in neurodiverse pupils? When will mainstream schools make full adaptations to meet the needs of neurodiverse students, and how will the real-life impact of the Scottish Government's action plan be assessed? Cabinet Secretary. Well, education authorities, uh, of course, already have a duty to identify, provide for and review the additional support needs of their pupils, including those with neurodiversities. Uh, Fiona Hislop is quite right to point out to the importance of early identification in ensuring that the support is there for the child um, and also, of course, uh, for uh, their family. Um, and it is very important that we look uh, very carefully at that. There are responsibilities, of course, with uh, Scottish and uh, government in this, and also, of course, for local authorities. All local authorities have a staged intervention and assessment process in place, which should enable practitioners to assess and meet their learners' needs. Uh, and I would like to thank uh, Fiona Hislop for uh, bringing uh, the work of the Donaldson Trust uh, to my attention uh, once again. And I would, of course, uh, be happy uh, to visit them, should the Donaldson Trust wish me to visit. Oliver Mundell. Thank you, uh, President Officer. Identification is important. So, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary 
if the Scottish Government will reconsider a more robust national neurodevelopmental screening programme in our primary schools. Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I mentioned in my response to Mark Ruskell, there is a number of pilot projects uh, that are currently um, in progress uh, to see what uh, we can learn to ensure that uh, there is a better identification, earlier identification in place, and then the support is in place. Of course, uh, there is no formal diagnosis um, needed for a child or young person to receive support. That is a very important aspect of the project uh, that is in place uh, nationally at the moment, but there will be lessons, of course, to learn from the pilots, and we will do so. Stephanie Callaghan. I very much welcome the Scottish Government's commitment to appointing a Learning Disability, Autism and Neurodiversity Commissioner. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what plans the Scottish Government has to gather the views of autistic people, their families and support organisations to ensure lived experience informs and shapes the role and powers of the Commissioner? Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government has adopted a human rights-based approach to ensure that the Learning, Disability, Autism and Neurodiversity Bill is fully co-designed with people with lived experience, including autistic people involving disabled people's led organisations and charities, representing the views of a wide range of people who come under the Learning, Disability, Autism and Neurodiversity umbrella. Um, and it is very important that we continue that work. Scoping work on the bill is underway, as part of which the Scottish Government is, of course, currently running a series of events with existing stakeholders to allow us to work alongside people with lived experience to design the public consultation and the initial policy options that will be included. Question number four, Christine Graham. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether its priorities for the skills required to support the economy have changed as a result of any consequences of withdrawal from the EU. Minister Jamie Hepburn. Uh, the National Strategy for Economic Transformation recognises a skilled population is fundamental to productivity and prosperity. The NCS Skilled Workforce Programme sets out priority actions so that people have the skills they need at every stage of life and that employers invest in the skill set of their workforce. NCET highlights that Brexit will inflict greater damage to the economy than even the pandemic. This is becoming increasingly apparent with almost all sectors reporting labour and skill shortages. To help mitigate these consequences, the Scottish Government will implement a programme of work to attract talent from the rest of the UK and is committed and will launch a migration service for Scotland. Christine Graham. Uh, thank you. And, President Officer, first, can I thank you for allowing me to leave immediately after my supplementary to comply with the long standing engagement arranged, obviously, before this truncated lunch. And notwithstanding that there is a role in education, Minister, to provide a relevant workforce for society, does the Minister, however, agree with me that the strength of Scottish education is its broad base with flexibility built in as pupils progress through secondary school and at senior level may very well change their mind about what they want to do later in life? Minister. In, in general terms, yes, I, I very much do uh, agree with that. We, of course, we uh, see the uh, constant change to uh, the nature of our society and our economy. and In that sense, our education system must uh, adapt and must ensure that people can be resilient and adapt as, uh, in the face of those uh, changes as well. So, yes, I, I very much agree uh, with the, the point that Christine Graham makes. And not only is it true for the school environment, it is also true for people's education and skills and defence across the entirety of their life. So she can be assured that that is the approach that I will take in relation to the area of activity I have. Question number five, Megan Gallagher. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how it plans to address the reported increase in incidents of violence in schools. Cabinet Secretary. All forms of violence are unacceptable and have no place in our schools or indeed society. We and partners across the education sector advocate an approach for schools and local authorities to work with pupils on the underlying reasons behind inappropriate behaviour. We want all pupils to respect their peers and staff and are supporting a number of programmes to promote positive relationships and tackle indiscipline, abuse and violence. This includes good behaviour management, restorative approaches and programmes to help develop social, emotional and behavioural skills. Megan Gallagher. Teaching unions such as the NES, UWT and EIS have raised serious concerns about the soaring violence and aggression in classrooms. They have warned that the reduction of classroom assistance, combined with the SNP government's refusal to commission research into poor behaviour, are contributing factors. One union representative has even claimed it is as if they do not really want to know the scale of the problem. Cabinet Secretary, this is happening under the SNP's watch. So, will you therefore listen to the concerns being raised about increased levels of violence in our schools? 
and will the Scottish Government admit that cuts to council and education budgets are putting teachers at risk? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we have, uh, of course, uh, now seen 2,000 additional uh, staff, uh, teaching staff compared to uh, pre-pandemic levels. And, of course, uh, we have also uh, an invested an additional £45 million since 2019-20 to enhance the provision of support staff uh, within schools. Uh, the latest um, edition of the Behaviour in Scottish Schools um, research is a very, very important part of our work. The most recent iteration of that was due to take place in 2020, although, as I hope the Chamber uh, would appreciate, given what was happening at schools at the time, the decision was taken to cancel that research because of COVID. Arrangements are currently underway for the next wave um, of this research uh, to, uh, to be developed, um, and we are progressing with that. Um, that will provide a very important research angle, but in the meantime, of course, we will work uh, very carefully with local authorities uh, and with our trade union partners to ensure that the policies and support are in place to be able to, to provide our teachers uh, and our young people with support to ensure that there is no violence um, or misbehaviour within schools, if that can at all be helped. Eleanor Whitton. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide an update on work to educate young people on gender-based violence in schools to combat sexual harassment and indeed intimate partner um, abuse um, within young people? Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government wants all children and young people to develop mutually respectful and uh, responsible and confident relationships. There are a number of targeted programmes to support positive behaviour and relationships that ha help address gender-based harassment in schools. One example of this is the Mentors in Violence uh, Prevention, which tackles gender stereotyping and attitudes uh, equally safe at school, um, is another project. Uh, Fearless uh, also educates and supports pupils to speak up uh, about crime. Uh, these are very, very important parts of work, and the Gender-Based Violence in Schools Working Group are developing a national framework to ensure consistent messaging on gender-based harassment for everyone working with young people. Question six has been withdrawn. Question seven, Claire Adamson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the future of STEM learning in Scotland. Minister Jamie Hepburn. The latest annual report on the Government's STEM education training strategy was published on the 26th of May. The report demonstrates that despite restrictions required as a consequence of the COVID-19 pandemic, the majority of STEM education partners were able to continue to deliver programmes of professional learning and related activity. As a next step, we plan to improve the strategy governance and performance monitoring arrangements in the coming months. The aim is to focus on priority areas such as the upskilling of computing teachers, teachers helping to ensure inequalities in access to STEM continue to be addressed, and that STEM education effectively contributes to the government's net zero ambitions for Scotland. Claire Adamson. Thank you. Um, this week, um, Equate Scotland's annual conference discussed STEM through an intersectional lens. Uh, Minister, the understanding of existing power structures and their contributions to inequality is key to intersectionality. Um, so does the Minister agree with me that we have to continue to improve diversity in the STEM sector to ensure that we benefit from the vast potential in this area? Minister. Uh, well, yes, I, I do agree with that. Let me place on the record my thanks to uh, Equate Scotland for all the work they do. I know they uh, play a, a tremendously important role in highlighting these issues. We cannot uh, fulfil our potential as a country. We do not allow everyone to make best use of uh, their uh, talents, and STEM is no different in that regard. Since 2019, Education Scotland's Improving Gender Balance Equalities team has been working with schools and local authorities to effect culture change in schools to tackle stereotypes and unconscious bias. And that work continues to be supported. And since it was established, the team has engaged with more than 1,100 education establishments. This is an important area, and the work will continue. Pam Gossel. Thank you, Presiding Officer. More than one in ten jobs in Scotland are now in the digital sector, with an average salary of more than 52,000. But the number of STEM secondary school teachers has declined since 2008, and there is a downturn in the number of pupils actually choosing STEM subjects. To ask the Minister, what is the Scottish Government doing to ensure pupils are leaving school with the skill sets that are aligned with high growth sectors? Minister. Well, Mr. Kozel speaks to simultaneously the opportunity and the challenge. The challenge being uh, that we require to ensure the steady supply of uh, such individuals to take uh, up uh, the opportunities that are in place. But where 
we have that lack of supply, there are many opportunities for people to take up uh, those uh, jobs, and it can cause challenges in uh, recruiting for the area of teaching. That's why uh, we have our £20,000 bursary for career changers to try and support those who are qualified in STEM areas to, to come in uh, to the teaching profession. And it's also uh, why we're continuing to take forward uh, the recommendations uh, that Mark Logan uh, made uh, uh, through a review of uh, technology ecosystems, uh, and that includes supporting the teacher-led Scottish Teachers Advancing the Computing Science Project at uh, Glasgow University. Uh, along with the provision of additional resources of £1.3 million uh, the last financial year for schools to transform the teaching of computing science. Question number eight, Richard Leonard. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will outline the role of Skills Development Scotland in delivering its economic recovery plans. Minister Jamie Hepburn. <coughs> yeah. As outlined in the Ministerial Letter of Guidance issued to Skills Development Scotland for 2022-23, Skills Development Scotland, working with other agencies and partners, will support the delivery of key actions within the National Strategy for Economic Transformation, particularly within the Skilled Workforce Programme. The actions in the Skilled Workforce Programme are designed to ensure that people have the skills they need at every stage of life to have rewarding careers and employers invest in the skilled employees they need to grow their businesses. Richard Leonard. Uh, can I thank the Minister for his response? Back in January this year, the Auditor General reported to this Parliament that the Scottish Government, for almost five years, had presided over a complete and utter failure to agree a plan for skills for Scotland's workers. The Scottish Government was rebuked for not giving, I quote, the necessary leadership, the, the oversight, the clarity to deliver this. Urgent action was called for. Instead, six months later, and the Government still has no credible skills plan. Workers, employers, trade unions, people out of work are still in the dark. And Skills Development Scotland is now facing a budget cut of £5.8 million. When is the Minister finally going to deliver what he, he was told that he needed to deliver back in January? Minister. Well, of course, uh, Mr Leonard refers to the report that his committee has considered. He knows full well that I am engaged in uh, responding to uh, the report. We have welcomed the uh, recommendations. We are taking them uh, forward just now in relation to the uh, the suggestion that we have no plan for taking forward a, a programme of uh, uh, delivering skills interventions for the people of Scotland. I would uh, reject that assertion. We have, through the National Strategy for Economic Transformation, made a range of commitments to support uh, the provision of skills interventions across a, a person's life. We have the Future Skills Action Plan, which we are working towards. And in relation to uh, the funding for Skills Development in Scotland, they are funded to deliver the core services that they provide. There were some services that uh, were uh, provided as a one-off uh, intervention that, yes, aren't being funded now, but they have the funding that uh, they require to get on with the task, as demonstrated by the fact that we saw, for example, a 42 per cent uplift in the number of modern apprenticeship starts last year by comparison to the year before. That says to me that we've got a skill system that's delivering. Thank you. That concludes portfolio questions. The next item of business is a statement by Tom Arthur on provisional outturn 2021 to 2022. I'll allow a moment for members to, to get themselves into place.